This video is made for adult collectors because, oh, the joys of entirely clear 2014 toys. So the Age of Extinction Dinobots are probably getting Studio Series releases soon, seeing as Evan said once that once 86 is done, we'll be getting these dudes, and Swoop is next year. And Ben kind of confirmed at uh, PulseCon that Swoop is finished. So soon, I hope. And if you know me, you know I'm a dumbass. And when I find out a new toy is coming out, I want to get the old one to see how they are. So I wanted the old Dinobots. Even the ones that aren't probably going to get new toys, still missing Snarl and Slash, but I'll get one of those soon. So in Platinum Edition, they made a whole set of Dinobots, minus Snarl for reasons, I guess, and Slash. And they decided to make them all out of clear plastic. Why? I never understood the need for all clear figures. Like, they look cool, but that's about it. And while these aren't 100% clear, it's still a lot of 2014 plastic made of clear, and that makes me fear for its longevity. Because if we know 2014 plastic, you know it's not very good. But they're all still in one piece? So that, so there's, so there's that. And oh boy, do they scare me a little bit. The molds themselves are weird. The Dynamots as a whole were just strange toy-wise, but we get five characters here. Grimlock, Strafe, Scorn, Slug, and Slog. Only one of them kept their original names. Don't know why they changed Sludge's name, but eh, I'd, I'd, whatever. He's not called Slog anymore, thankfully. So I figured we'd start in Dino mode, because that's really the best part of this entire set of figures. And my least favorite is definitely Slog. He's such a slog. Get, get it? Okay, I'll, I'll go see myself out. Slog is flimsy, even in dino mode. The torso connection is wibbly and the panel on the front... Okay, okay, this this panel. It's made of rubber, like a, a lot of him is actually. And I assume this is to do with safety shit, but because it's sat in its box most of its life, it's warped so bad out of the box. I've used the usual heat method and had a rubber band around it for a week to hold it in place but it's a pretty thick piece of rubber and it doesn't want to sit properly even after the fixes, which is a huge pain. He does look neat though, especially adorned with the weapons, though I wish they kept the red on them. Would have been nice to help his color scheme be a bit more vibrant since he wasn't in the film, so he doesn't have to be that screen accurate because there's no screen to be accurate to. Slug here looks pretty badass. Love the huge purple stripe down the back that ends in this real ugly Games Workshop-y gray tail. Don't know why they didn't paint it like the rest of his gray rubber parts, but whatever. But the colors feel more consistent than Slog, and I like the amount of horns this dude has. Shame his weapon storage is a bit poo, but he's a neat little brick. Strafe I have an interesting relationship with, because my original one's tails melted off the toy in the heat. It, um, okay. So I'm skeptical of this one slightly. A little bit of backstory. The reason it melted was because the temperature in Canada, especially at the time when I had this guy, fluctuated so much day and night. And so one night it was really cold and then it sh the temperature shot up and I just did don't the toy I don't think could handle that and I picked him up one day and the tails were stuck to the shelf. It was great. But as a two-headed fictional dinosaur mode, it's really cool. The legs may be a bit chunky, but that's the only looks complaint I have on this guy. The wingspan is incredibly huge for a deluxe and on a stand it looks epic. And his weapon storage ain't half bad. But if we want to talk weapon storage, scorn. This Deluxe is probably the best objectively out of all the Dinobots from the Age of Extinction line, following the more Jurassic Park Spinosaurus over the one from the film or an accurate real life one, which it works pretty well. Though the mold isn't without issues, the hips are notoriously loose on this toy on almost every deco that I've handled, and I've handled like four different decos of this guy. But this one in particular has dino arms that are so stiff that they will break the clear ball joints off if I move them, so I'm just not going to. But as I alluded to earlier, his weapon storage is in his tail, and hidden away is his sword. Now, that, now that's weapon storage, and it even disguises itself as one of the tail spikes. I love that. And finally, we have the king himself, Grimlock. This is my first time actually handling this mold, and I gotta say, it's very good. Sure, it has this weird hump and the short tail, but he looks mean and imposing, and it's got a very stable base. It's super posable, 
in comparison to the rest of the Dinobots. Oh, the furnace turned off. And has a cool spring-loaded mouth gimmick so he can eat his breakfast like a good boy. He has weapon storage, which is super funny because you just take his tail mace thing and plug it into his poo chute and now he's got an even longer tail. So as a set, these do look fantastic and they fit together a lot better than the retail release of figures because the retail release is just like Power Ranger colors. But now let's get them into giant men. So one thing I forgot to write in, this, in the shot planner was to put the 86 Dinobots with them. So we're quickly gonna do that. Ah. Even though he doesn't, he's not in this box set and he's standing upright, there's, there's that. Okay, cool. Now let's like make them all go away. And we're gonna start with my least favorite idiot because he's an idiot. Um, yeah, it, I'm going to preface this by saying these are clear plastic, so I'm going to be handling them with care. If it looks like I'm manhandling them, that's just the camera angle. I'm not actually manhandling these things. So, no, I'm kidding. I'm going to remove all of the weapons because that just makes life a hell of a lot easier. Because this transformation is not, not fun. So to start with, we're gonna take this, oh, see, it does that a lot. We're gonna take this panel and just bring it up. I think you rotate the head, but I can't remember at the moment, so we'll just wait. We're gonna do the arms, fold out the hands, straighten them out, fold out the hands like so, and then just sort of bring this out while rotating this back. There we go. And that, bring these forward to lock the shoulders in place. There you have the arms pretty much done. Now we're going to split this section here, split the tail and bring this around and around this is scary. There we go. Rotate that all the way around, open this up, bring out the dinosaur foot or the robot foot, fold in the dinosaur foot, close this up peg it into the out of focus red section. Come on. I don't want to put too much, there we go. I don't want to put too much force on it. And then you take this, you peg it in, hold the foot down, rotate the leg. Ooh, close that up and there you have one leg. Uh, let's do the next one. Okay, now once you have all the legs done, he's basically two halves on a stick. So you just compress the stick and it should just clip in like that. Bring this against his back. I usually fold this up just because it brings it out of the way. And there you have slogs. Well, yeah, that's, that's pretty much his robot mode. That's not fun. Let's get a fun one. Where did he go? A fun one. Now zoom in and go down for this. Slug, 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 yeah, slug. So you wanna start by rotating the tail up and folding this up and zooming out so you can actually see what I'm doing. Fold the feet out and the dinosaur feet into his knee pads, like so. Then you wanna take this section, unpeg the belly, open up the head. Eh, this is always tricky for me to do, especially on this guy, because I don't wanna just pull on it. There we go. I don't want to put these tiny clear pegs in the torso. Oh, that made a horrible sound. So I'm just going to leave them there and we're going to pretend they're pegged in. Focus, idiot. Not on my thumb, on the on the toy. There we go. Hold up the thumb or hand. And there you have Slug. Scorn is just Beast Wars Megatron. Like you, you, bring, you bring all this stuff uh, down. I don't like those double hinges on clear plastic. They scare me. Here's the, here's the loose hips, by the way. They're just, every single copy of the mold I've owned or handled has been like that. Now we're gonna rotate these sections around like so. Now the cool part is when you rotate this, you'll notice the entire upper body shifts up, which is pretty neat. It, it makes his head easier to grab. And then we're just gonna unfold everything. Oh, that's stiff. Unfold everything. This pegs into here. The arms are supposed to fold up, but because they're so stiff, I'm not gonna bother. Then you just bring all this stuff down. Rotate out the hand. 
There you go. Now let's do Strafe, who has probably the most simple and honestly to me the most fun of the transformations. So we're gonna remove all of his weapons here because I forgot to do that like an idiot. So to start with, I'm just gonna bring the tails back just to make it easier. You fold out the legs like that. Unpeg the hands from the back of the wings like so. Now the wings, when you fold them, fold them in like this, you can leave them like that, which a lot of people do display it like that, which is fine. But if you want to like fold it up on the back, what I do is you fold it down, right? And then you put the tail through this little gap that's gonna form here, like that, there you go. And that gives you the cape with the coattails look, which is really neat. And just get everything sort of straightened out here properly. Then you fold these out, fold this head up and bring the collars down like that. I love how they did that. And there you have Strafe. Big man, big man himself. Fold up the feet and just bring them around like that. Now we're going to bring these out and then just sort of unclip the legs Bring them down, fold these the rest of the way, and just straighten out the, the feet there. And that's that's a that's a very interesting looking dinosaur. Anyways, we're gonna come back here. We're going to bring the chest panel down, peg it into place, take this little hood section, bring it up, unpeg this, split the mouth. Then you wanna fold up the ears to get this panel past it. Bring this up and it will, or should peg in. There we go. They are on chrome pegs, which is a little scary to me. And that just folds up onto the back like that. And then you have Grimlock. Now you can do the Gorilla Arms thing if you want, because they're supposed to be like this, but no, forget that. Regular elbows. Robots look like a funky rock band of sorts, but I dig it. I love the knight-esque designs for the Dinobots, and these really do help carry that over, even though these are based on concept art designs. Slog, again, is my least favorite. He just doesn't look good to me in any position. He's chunky, he's got gorilla arms, he's just a goober. His weapon wielding is a tad strange too, as none of it really is supposed to go in his hands. He feels less flimsy in this mode, but still flimsy enough for me to not like handling it. It's just not a fun toy. Slug is a tad awkward in robot mode, and that's just due to how his dino arms store in bot mode, though you can fan mode it to move them out of the way. I love the split head over the shoulders look, and this guy does it super well in my opinion for a small deluxe. He has regular elbows, yay! And his helmet really takes me back to those like Knight's Kingdom days. Strafe is my favorite subjectively of the deluxe robot modes, looks wise. He has a pterodactyl collar and a cape. That's just such a badass design. It's a shame his arms are weird as hell with like the gorillas, but with the sword pointing, it's so strange. He's also the only one to come with a gun. He came packing with that crossbow. One thing I really like is that you can fold out the beautiful chrome wings in bot mode to get him on a flight stand and then he just looks epic. Scorn, he's very nice, but then his neck. He can only look down and that's like it. You have to take the head off and sand the flat parts to be more round at the back and then plug it back in. Then he can look up, but because his head is chrome, I wouldn't advise it on this release. The rest of him is great. Regular arms, proper articulation for the time. And I like how his legs fill out by pulling the shin panels out. I, I think that's a very neat solution. And you can do a Beast Wars Megatron custom on this, which I started on my old one, but never actually finished. Now Grimlock. Damn, that's a nice ass robot. He is supposed to have gorilla arms, but you can mitigate that by just not following the instructions to robot mode. The arm chunks though, I, I kind of like. It gives off that more bruiser look. I just like the stature of this Voyager. He's slim yet bulky aesthetically, and it really works here. It's not accurate, but it's super cool stylization to that bulky ass Grimlock design we actually got in the film. He's also a nice height for a Voyager too, so that's cool. Now the clear, I have my doubts. It's not the best plastic to begin with being from 2014 and now making it clear on top of that. Eh. My friend, this man, told me that he had these back in the day and there's only like one or two surviving members now and he barely touches it. 
So test of time might be a thing with these. What's also funny is they don't have wiki pages. You can click on them on the wiki, like on the Platinum Edition section, and it takes you to the Takara decos, which are different. Only Grimlock has a wiki page with an image on it. So if anyone from the wiki is watching this, I don't know how the process works, but yeah, the deluxes and slog aren't up there. Well, slog is a description, but no pictures. So one of the cool things about the Dinobots is each one is unique when it comes to its posing because they have certain amounts of joints spliced between either or. So we'll start with the slog. Stray fell over. With slog, he's got a ball joint at the head. Um, he can look up very far, which is very nice. Uh, shoulder rotation, you got bicep rotation, gorilla armed elbows. He does have a waist joint, which is nice. If you move these tail parts out of the way, hips can go forward about that far. They can go back that far, in and out, thigh rotation. Just a little under 90 degrees of bend at the knee, and then the feet can go forward and back. Which, he's pretty poseable other than his, his legs, but just his like floppy parts make him really hard to pose. By contrast to that, just because he's next to me, Scorn. His issue, like I mentioned, was the loose hips. But other than that, oh, and his head. The head can rotate left and right and sink. Shoulders can do a full 360, in and out. Elbow bend, bicep rotation. Same with this side, it's all, it's all the same. Um, he doesn't really have a waist joint because this locks it in. You can unlock it, but it only spins the one way because of the gimmick. So it doesn't really count. Hips can go forward and back, trying to be careful here because they're clear plastic. Then go in and out. You have thigh rotation, I just closed that. You have a double jointed knee, which is quite nice. And then his toes bend down. So he's a little bit more poseable-ish. And now let's move on to slug. The slug is, is actually very poseable. Head is on a ball joint. You can look left and right, up and down. Shoulders are on ball joints so they can move around pretty freely. These can move out of the way to accommodate the outward motion, which is nice. Bicep rotation, 90 degree bend at the elbow, butterfly joints due to transformation, a waist joint, hips can go forward, the hip skirt can, uh, the butt plate can move back to go back that far in and out, thigh rotation, 90 degree bend at the knee or double joint if you want to unpeg the transformation hinge, and then the toes can go forward and back. Strafe's posing is strange because of how his joints are placed. So the head can rotate, it can look up and down, but like the transformation joint doesn't peg in, so his head just kind of sinks. These can move however you want them to. The shoulders are on universal joints, so they can go forward and back, in and out, bicep rotation, 90 degree, bell, and bleh, 90 degree elbow bend. Then he has those weird gorilla arm wrist things. He does have a waist joint. The hips are a bit strange because they're meant to rotate this way for alt mode and then that way for robot mode, but they like to sort of bend in all the time and it makes the legs look weird. They go forward that far. Don't really go back because of the wings. They go out, thigh rotation. You can do double jointed knee if you want to unpeg the transformation hinge. And that's pretty much it. And then the wings can splay up. But yeah, it falls over. Grimlock is probably the most modern out of all of them, except he doesn't have a waist joint. So the head can rotate and it can look down and up a little bit. Uh, shoulders can rotate. As you see, the jaws can go in and out to accommodate that. They can go in and out. He does have bicep swivels. They are very, very tight on this and the shoulders are clear, so I'm not rotating them. He does have an elbow bend and a wrist swivel. Like I said, nothing at the waist. Crotch flap can go forward to accommodate. Legs can go forward that far. They can go back about that far. You do have in and out though. They do stop because of these hip skirt sections. Thigh rotation, which I wish was under these because these limit the thigh rotation. He does have what feels like a soft detented knee that bends just a little under 90 degrees. And then the feet can go down and he's got ankle tilt, which is quite nice, albeit they're really high up, but he does have ankle tilt. So this set, uh, well, here's the thing. There are plenty of ways to buy these molds. Last night versions, DVD versions, G1 box set, two packs, SDCC, the, the, the regular release, the list goes on and on and on. They made so many of the Dinobots. And as molds, they are fun, but I don't think I would go for this Platinum pack in particular just because of the clear and its longevity. I still need to nab a Slash and a Snarl to get the full set. And seeing as how once 86 Swoop releases will be getting these guys again as leaders, well, at least the ones in the film, 
paying the prices for this set online is probably not the best idea, but the individual releases go for dirt cheap on the aftermarket. So that's the way I would say to go. Like you can get a Voyager Grimlock for 15 to $20 Canadian. It's not that expensive. But that's been my look at the Platinum Edition Dinobot set. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.